five, five, eighteen, twelve. In one who has unflinching devotional faith in Krishna, <clears throat> all the good qualities of Krishna and the demigods are consistently manifest. However, he who has no devotion to the Supreme Lord, personality of Godhead, has no good qualifications because he is engaged by mental concoction and material existence, which is the external feature of the Lord. This verse was spoken by Prahlad Maharaj, who was offering prayers to the Lord Nishringadeva. Say Sabdagunahoya Vaishnava Vlaksana Sabbakahe Nayaya Kari Gud Parsana. All these transcendental qualities are the characteristics of pure Vaishnavas. And they cannot be fully explained, but I shall try to point out some of the important qualities. So, hmm. Hmm. Kripala Krita Droha Satya Sada Sama Didosha Vadanya Mirda Suchi Akijana Sarvapaka Karaka Sata Krishnaika Sarana Akama Nahi Aniha Stira Vijita Saguna Mitabuk Apramata Manada Amani Gambira Karuna Maitra Kaga Daksha Maoni. Hmm. Devotees are always merciful, humble, truthful, equal to all, faultless, magnanimous, mild, and clean. They are without material possession, possessions and they perform welfare work for everyone. They are peaceful, surrender to the Krishna, and desireless. They are indifferent to material acquisitions. They can be fixed in devotional service. They completely control the six bad qualities, lust, anger, greed, and so forth. They only eat as much as required, and they are not inebriated. They're respectful, grave, compassionate, without false prestige. They are friendly, poet, expert, and Silence. So here we find that these are the 26 qualities of the Vaishnava, which are mentioned in many verses in the Bhagavatam. It's mentioned in the second canto and in the fourth canto. Again, in that fifth canto, that one we recited by Prahlad Maharaj in the purport, it's mentioned there. Here, Prabhupada speaks about these in a couple lectures. Uh, so um, this is how you can understand a Vaishnavi has these 26 qualities. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most the mercy, the first one is merciful. Sometimes it's translated differently. It said it says kind, but we can say it's the same thing in this in this context. Uh, so um, you want to uh, judge your own pro progress in Krishna consciousness. You see how you are making, you're developing these 26 qualities. Um, one, that's, one, the last one, it says silent. That doesn't mean no speaking. It's not Moni Baba. It means silent when it comes to material topics, material talks. Devotees speak, but they speak in relationship to devotional service or about Krishna and Krishna's pure devotees. Mm -hmm. They're humble, truthful. They treat everyone equally. 
accordingly. We can't find any fault in them. They are generous, magnanimous, mild nature, and always clean. Although they may have material possessions, they, they only take as much as they need to keep body and soul together. They perform welfare work for everyone. That means they're engaged in devotional service. They're peaceful. They're not agitated by the changing, changing uh, energies of the modes. Uh, they're engaged in devotional service. They're, they're surrendered to Krishna and they have no, no material desires. Uh, they are indifferent to material acquisitions. In other words, they can accept them or not accept them. It doesn't matter. They are not disturbed by what comes or what goes. They are indifferent to these things. The six bad qualities, lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy are the six bad qualities. They are free from this. Or if they have them, as it says here, they control them. They eat only as much as required. Meet their book is the translation for that. They eat in order to serve Krishna nicely. Uh, they are not foolish. Inebriated means uh, they're not insane. <laughs> they are very sane and very organized people. <laughs> They're respectful to all, grave. They contemplate spiritual subject matters. Um, they do not like to see the sufferings of others, so they try to relieve that. Therefore, they're compassionate. Um, they are not proud of anything they have. And they give all credit to Krishna. They are friendly to everyone. They are also poetic. Um, this quality of po poetic comes naturally as one makes advancement in Krishna conscious. One will start to develop a tendency to, to speak both poetically and to write poetically. It happens automatically. Whatever they do, they do it in the best possible way. They're expert. And as we mentioned, they're silent when it comes to um, material topics. <laughs> These are the 26 qualities of the Vaishnav. This is the way to calibrate, to evaluate how much one is developing in Krishna consciousness by holding this mirror of 26 qualities and uh, addressing one's characteristics accordingly and seeing, am I developing these? How much? Where am I lacking? <laughs> okay, next verse. Titiksha karunika suhidam sarvadehinam ajanta shatra varshant sarva sarabhushanam. Another verse from the Bhagavatam. This is 321, 2521. This is spoken by Kapila Dave. Devotees are always tolerant, forbearing, and very merciful. They are the well wishers of every living entity. They follow the scripture injunctions, and because they have no enemies, they are very peaceful. These are the decorations of a devotee. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 3.25.21. When the sages headed by Shanak inquired about Kapila Dev, the incarnation of Godhead, Sutta Goswami, who was the topmost devotee of the Lord, quoted talks about self-realization between Vidura and Maitreya, a friend of Vyasa Dev. During these talks, the topics of Kapila Dev had come up. At the same time, Maitreya had repeated Kapila Dev's discussions with his mother when the Lord states that attachment to material things is the cause of conditioned life. When a person becomes attached to transcendental things, 
is on the path of liberation. Om again to Mirandasya, Kinajana, Salakaya, Chaksu, Umilitam, Nena, Tasma, Shri Guru Venamaha. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale. Shri Vakti Vakti Ram, the Swami Tinamri Namaste, Saraswati Devi, Om Vimani Pacharini. Near Vishesha Sunyavari, Pastyatya De Satarine. Panchakalpa to Vishya Kripa Sindhu Vaycha. Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Gauna Mahonamaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vrasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So if you'll just give me one moment I just need that much time and I'll be right back <laughs> And here we are hearing more. This time, first time we are hearing from Srila Prabhupada's purports. Now we are hearing from Kapila Dev, who mentioned some of the outstanding qualities of the Vaishnava. Tolerant and forbearing, similar but different. Merciful, always well is the wisher of everyone, even the enemy, they wish their enemy the best also. And Prahlad Maharaj was asked uh, if we take a benediction after Harani Kashipu, his father was killed by Lord Nishringadeh, and Nishringadeh was very inclined to reward his uh, devotee for such devotion, uh, Prahlad Maharaj simply asked for the benediction of giving his father liberation. Same with Srila Haridas Thakur, when he was being beaten in 22 marketplaces, he was simply praying for those living entities who were his torturers to receive the mercy of the Lord. So, um, here it says they the scriptural judge they have they have no enemies. People may make a devotee an enemy, but a devotee doesn't make anyone an enemy. There are people who 
for whatever reason, they're demons, they're atheists, they're envious. They find reasons to try to vilify, uh, criticize, or even harm, and maybe even try to kill devotees. But devotees simply see that, and that that's just because of their ignorance. But they don't see that person as their enemy. They see that quality as being something due to the association of the material energy, and that's why people are like that. They associate with the lower modes, and therefore they're envious, greedy, and lusty. So although others will make a devotee an enemy, the devotee will have no enemies. Uh, and therefore, they're peaceful. <laughs> When you have an en enemies, it's hard to be peaceful. In fact, you can't be peaceful because your mind or even you're always thinking how to protect yourself or how to retaliate against your enemies. Um, the Kapila Dave says these are decorations, ornamentations. When something, when someone is dressed really nice, and sometimes you see ladies they dress very nicely and they may have a flower on the upper part of their dress or some flowers or jewelry in their hair. Or a man may wear a certain uh, ornament on his lapel when he's dressed in a suit or something. So these things are outstanding. When you see the ornamentations of a nicely dressed person, you notice those, they become more noticeable. So this is a devotee who has these qualities and they are the devotee's decorations. People see, oh, this person has such nice qualities. And then they sometimes they glorify those qualities. And they also think how to develop those qualities. So qualities of the devotees make up the character of the devotee and also the Evaluation, a devotee is evaluated by their qualities. And one of the most important qualities is how they treat others. That was mentioned in the uh, other series of qualities where there were 26 qualities of the devotee. One of them is very merciful, very kind to others. Uh, because they have no enemies, because they're always the well-wisher of everyone, they're always kind and, and uh, think of different ways and how to benefit others. And of course, the way they always think is how to give Krishna consciousness to others, which is the highest form of benediction one can receive. Because if one receives the mercy of a devotee, then that's the mercy of the Lord. <laughs> I was just reading today where Krishna was explaining to Shruta Dev, this is in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, how Shruta Dev, he was a poor Brahman, but he had welcomed Krishna along with a, a, a group of uh, very elevated Brahminical sages into his home. He worshipped them, he honored them, he glorified them. He washed their feet, sprinkled the water on him and his family, did everything in a beautiful way. But then at one point he turned his attention fully on Krishna. And after he glorified Krishna in so many ways and massaged Krishna's feet, Krishna wanted to do something. And Krishna responded by turning his attention towards the sages. Because he could see, Although Shruta Dev had honored everyone nicely, he was really focusing on him, Krishna, and not equally focusing on the sages at the same time. So Krishna mm, took that opportunity to instruct in a very sweet and very devotional way and very friendly way, the importance of honoring and glorifying great sages. And Krishna makes one statement in one in one of the verses where he says that 
you know, one can perform all kinds of activities in devotional service. And one can uh, gain much spiritual benefit and one can worship me in different ways. But if one receives the favorable glance of the great sages, then one can be immediately purified from all material taints, all material desires, all material tendencies. And Krishna illustrated that statement just to instruct Sukadev that here is the real benefit when the great sages and saints who were Brahmins, Vaishnavas, um, when they somehow or other act favorably towards you, then your life is, in other words, you have achieved perfection in devotional life. So here, we see that also here, that uh, one of the qualities of a devotee is that he is always merciful, kind, and friendly to each and every living entity according, accordingly. And then uh, sprinkled throughout the purport here, Prabhupada well, wants to mention that one who's, who's not attached to material things, He becomes attached to transcendental things, then he is on the path back home, and back to Godhead. <laughs> so sometimes we're asked the question how do we judge our progress in devotional service? And we give two or three different uh, reasons for. Uh, ways to judge that and one of the ways is to uh, understand and evaluate how much you are developing these qualities tolerance forbearance mercifulness well wish to others peaceful along with the other list that we just read all of these characteristics and qualities are like barometers in our uh, spiritual temperature. As we increase the, the spiritual temperature and decrease the material temperature, these qualities naturally develop, but we, they also are meant to be cultivated along with devotional service. Sometimes devotees ask, if we just do devotional service, will all these qualities uh, develop? And the answer is yes. And that come, comes from the acharyas. But then that means that kind of devotional service that is pure. So until we get to the stage of pure devotional service, we are still executing devotional service, maybe in a less pure way. And therefore, in order to purify our activities and develop these qualities, one has to practice these qualities. Uh, parallel to one's execution of the devotional service. One cannot be envious and be a devotee at the same time. <laughs> one cannot be intolerant and expect to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <laughs> and so these are some of the characteristics and qualities that are mentioned in devotional service. The devotee has all good qualities because he is connected with Krishna on the spiritual platform. And therefore, because Krishna is the reservoir of all these good qualities, he adopts these qualities through his execution of devotion and service. Same time, while well, cultivating separately for those who haven't reached the platform of Ananya bhakti. Ananya bhakti means unalloyed devotional service. And uh, we can pick Lord Chaitanya in his famous verse, Trinadapi Sunichena Tayori Vasa Hishnana Amaninam Mamanadena Kirtaniya Sadanahi. 
to be tolerant, to be peaceful, I'm sorry, to be humble, to be tolerant, to be prideless, and to be to give respects to others. Lord Chaitanya has enunciated these four qualities with the statement kirtani, uh, kirtaniya sadanahi, that if one is cultivating and developing these qualities, he can come to the platform of chanting Hare Krishna always. <laughs> Without these, uh, the, these qualities developing, uh, it becomes difficult to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and one will not find, not become attracted to them, to chanting. So Lord Chaitanya says humble, but he doesn't say just humble. He says more humble than the blade of grass. Uh, if you take a blade of grass, and you step on it, it doesn't complain. But in the translations in other areas, they say, no, it's not a blade of grass. It's like more humble than straw in the street. Because when you step on a blade of grass, although it doesn't complain, it again rises back up. When you, but a straw in the street lays flat and doesn't get back up. So he says more humble than that. Uh, tolerant like a tree, the tree is considered to be within the Shastras out of all living entities, the most tolerant of all living entities. It gives shade in the summertime. It gives wood in the wintertime. It uh, is home for birds, other animals also. It is... Um, it stands in the hot sun and gives shade to others, stands in the freezing cold and uh, doesn't complain. Uh, there's an interesting experience, I've seen it, and it's, you know, there are, when I was traveling in the Midwest in the United States of America, some of the most severe and horrific storms Snowstorms happen in those areas where it gets so freezing cold, sometimes blowing wind along with the freezing cold. And you see, there was, I was, I actually noticed it. These small trees who grow, that, that grow next to each other, <laughs> they get so cold from the weather that they wrap their, uh, branches around each other to give each other protection from the cold. It's interesting, you can actually notice that the, the, the trees actually move their branches towards another tree, which is right next to it. To it. These are small trees, tiny little trees, more like, more like uh, creepers, but in a developed way. <laughs> they actually show how, yes, they're living entities, and are responding to the cold. So they're very tolerant. They don't complain. And um, so tolerance, there's two kinds of tolerance. The tolerance that comes by way of living in the world. That's called Marta Sparsas Tukunteya Sit Nosa Sukadukada. Agapaino Nityas Tam Bharata. This is the tolerance you can't avoid, the non-permanent happiness that comes by way of uh, happy, uh, by the changing of the seasons, winter and summer seasons. <laughs> They're simply rising due to sense perception and one has to learn to tolerate. One has to tolerate the difficulties of the body and mind. <laughs> Excuse me. One has to tolerate the difficulties come by other living entities, mosquitoes, government, tax agents. <laughs> These are all miseries that have come. Uh, I won't get into that detail right now. Uh, uh, miseries that come by higher powers. 
excessive cold, excessive heat, flooding, droughts, earthquakes, cyclones, forest fires, pestilence, coronavirus. These are all coming by way of the Adi Daibik, or miseries imposed by higher powers. And so um, these you can't get around. They come, and you just have to learn to tolerate them. Right? So, but there's another kind of tolerance. Where Krishna explains that in the... Uh, uh, actually, it's not Krishna. It's actually Lord Brahma speaks to Krishna. One particular verse. Tatenu kampa shushamikshamana bhujane rakritam kripakam vidvava havir viradana maste chivetiyo Mukti Pradesha Dayabak. That one engaged in devotional service sometimes by, is put in an awkward position by Sri Krishna. And they have to undergo some suffering because of that. And then the devotee thinks, oh, actually, I'm just getting a small reaction to what I actually deserve. I deserve much more suffering than this. Because Krishna is so kind, he's only given me a small amount of what I actually deserve. Therefore, I offer my obeisances unto the Lord. This kind of tolerance, which comes by way of the arrangement of Krishna and the reaction to it, uh, this uh, makes one very much advance on the path of devotional service and qualifies one to go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we can uh, see these two different types of tolerance and learn how to deal with it. The tolerance that come by way of the changing of the material energy, you simply have to deal with it. That's the way it is. Living in this material world means having undergo difficulties. We have a body. We have there's other living entities that are not there. They want to give you trouble all the time. And it's just the way they are. <clears throat> we have to learn to tolerate. And then the other tolerance is that one that comes by way of Krishna, that's his mercy to elevate the devotee towards the platform of pure, pure devotional service. Okay, we wanted to explore this particular quality because it's one of the most important out of all of the qualities, learning to be tolerant. We have a material body, it gets sick, we have to learn how to tolerate it. <laughs> what can we do? It's just the way it is. <laughs> Try to get cured from the sickness, but in the meantime, you have to accept that this is the fact, that's what you're going through, and then you learn to tolerate it. Those who cannot tolerate are never peaceful, never happy. Um, okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any discussions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, uh, for explaining us the qualities of the devotees um, and devotees and online. If you have any questions, comments, realizations, please unmute yourself and you can ask the questions. And uh, please, it will be nice if you can keep your cameras on while you're uh, discussing, discussing with Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah.
Questions, questions. This is mm, the qualities of a Vaishnava. It's such a broad topic. Uh, is it okay, Guru Maharaj, if I start? I, I will initiate the questions maybe then. Uh, I have one question about the tolerance, Guru Maharaj, that uh, uh, how do we develop this quality when, uh, uh, you know, so many times it happens when we, when we serve in the temple? Um, uh, this quality is very much needed and there is, you know, um, a risk or danger of, you know, of, uh, offending devotees. Uh, just because many times we set our expectations that, you know, some services should be done at particular level or something like that. And uh, when it doesn't happen or, or you know, and then we, that, you know, increases our frustration on particular things. So how do we tolerate that, you know, whatever is Krishna is desiring that is happening, even though it's not as per our expectation, but it's, so how well, do we do that? It has to do with Krishna, then you have to, in a very devotional way, point these things out to rectify the situation. That is, that's a service that is done. It's done as a service, but, if you if it's, if it's bothering you personally, that's uh, intolerance. If you if you see that it's it's disturbing the atmosphere of the temple because it is not it's contrary to what is supposed to be going on and it's not going on or something is going on that is not supposed to be going on. Therefore, we have temple protocol. We have to <laughs> make some adjustment if that is our service. If it's not our service, then if we're really concerned, we can alert the authorities who will, who are there to, you know, um, there to uh, see that things go on according to the protocol of temple behavior and activity. Yeah, sometimes it just gets very difficult when, um, like, dealing with different devotees, and it, it just not all fingers are same, and we all have a different thinking about particular, you know, aspect, and uh, it, it just gets. Uh, do we think like that time? With, I personally think that should I just tolerate it and let it happen as it's happening, or should I interfere or do something about it, take action? Well, now you have to decide, but you should not make the situation worse by your desire to correct it. That means you shouldn't create some kind of animosity there. <laughs> it has to be done very uh, sweetly, but uh, clearly. But I would say, and this is where we lack as a society, there is, there should be someone who is considered to be the temple commander, temple manager. He's always in the temple during the temple functions and make sure everything goes on accordingly. It is his service or her service to point that out and change that, correct that, when things are not going on nicely. That would be a service for one devotee. And that that is uh, meant done in certain temples. It's in certain, most temples, we don't have that. We just let things go on. Uh, for instance, I'll give you an example. Now, I'm very observant of these things. Said so during the artsy, uh, and Prabhupada taught us this. This is the etiquette also. So when the ghee lamp, uh, someone comes up and uh, takes the ghee lamp and passes it around, goes to Prabhupada, then he goes to the men. His next duty is to take it and put it in a place and then put it down so a lady, one of the ladies can come up and do it also. If the man goes around and does it to the ladies, or if he even hands it to a lady, it's a it's a breach of the etiquette in the temple. <laughs> like that. So that's that's the standard we were taught. Like that. Um, 
another thing that is very disturbing is that when somebody goes around with the ghee lamp, they go around so fast that you don't even get a chance to put your hand over the lamp. And it's gone before it even get to you. You know, it's like they can't wait to finish. This is very annoying also. So it's up, you know, and there's, there's so many other things in the etiquette of temple behavior that must be, you know, uh, in line with the proper behavior and the etiquette of temple worship and temple association. <laughs> so I sometimes I see it and I correct it. I try to, and sometimes I don't correct it because I can see it'll make a bigger, bigger mess by trying to connect, correct, connect it. But ultimately, we should have someone in our temples, in each temple, who that is their service. They know what how things are, should go on, and they do it as a service to the devotees. They do it as a service to the Lord. I mean, I see all kinds of crazy things. People put the ghee lamp right next to Prabhupada's hands, and after a while, the hands start chipping and cracking. They don't, they don't realize that that is made out of a certain material, and you can't put heat next to it. They take the water, and they just throw it on Prabhupada like he's just like some flower that they're sprinkling water on or something. Uh, and so we get a little, I get a little bit upset when I see such behavior. And sometimes I try to correct it. Sometimes I try to instruct the devotees afterwards. When someone is leading kirtan and they're chanting, instead of chanting Rama, they're chanting, chanting Ramo. And this is also, Prabhupada has taught us that in a very strong way, we should chant Rama, not Ramo. He was very enthusiastic to make sure we didn't fall into this pattern. So someone should be there also to instruct in a very uh, sensitive way. Uh, that, that service has to be someone who is observant, knows the rules and regulations, and can speak to the devotees without disturbing them. Because sometimes people are not ready for the, to be corrected. And so you have to also be aware of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. That was really good examples to understand. Yeah, my questions were similar, like, yeah. Thank you. And one more silly question, maybe what does it mean by forbearing? It's my lack of English knowledge, but uh, I have seen this word in the qualities first time, so I'm just checking. Forbearing means you're taking on a lot of uh, activity and you do it as a service rather than as a burden. Mm. And that's one definition of forbearing. Forbearing means also it's very similar to tolerance, but it seems to be a more of an excess uh, uh, definition of tolerance and such that is things are coming to one that are difficult to accept, but one has to somehow accept them anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Devotees, yeah, I'm sorry to take your time. You can ask your questions. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Goranga. Um, Maharaj, I just wanted to ask, um, uh, once I was in the uh, temple and uh, I had uh, noticed in the bookshelf that there were some books. Um, I'm sorry, I've come down with a little cold, so... Uh... Excuse me. Oh, go ahead, continue again. Yeah. Uh, so in the temple, I noticed that there was 
there were some books uh, which were uh, mentioning about the Gordian. Uh, so uh, I think those books uh, were belonging to the devotees who are uh, from Gaudiya, but not uh, from Iskon. I think Bhakti Vikas uh, Swami or something like that. So I uh, I picked up those uh, two three books and I was trying to read it and one of the uh, devotees in my friend circle, they told me that first you should prefer reading Prabhupada's book rather than those books. Correct. And uh, and you should also notify uh, the temple that uh, you should encourage people not to read those books. So well, those I'm... Books should, I'm th those books shouldn't even be there in the temple. Uh, yes, Maharaj. I uh, I'm I was told so. I I uh, I informed the uh, you know administration about the book. They told me that okay, we'll do it, but they didn't uh, took off those books. So how should we uh, you know if we are even mentioning uh, them, but they're still not taking action. So. Um, how should we you know, tolerate those things? Because uh, certain things, we are at the neophyte level. And well, they don't understand, and they don't understand Prabhupada's statements. <laughs> Prabhupada, in the early days, explained when someone wanted to take shelter of one of his god brothers after he, when Prabhupada was sick, and it looked like Prabhupada might even leave his body, the question came up, where do we, should we go for shelter? Prabhupada became very pensive and very di di disturbed by the question. He says, if anybody says even one word different than me, then everything is lost. In other words, your faith will be destroyed. So chastity means to stay with within the context of Srila Prabhupada's teachings. That's the quality of chastity. That's the quality of the Vaishnava. So we have so many books. Why do we have to, you know, explore other areas? If we can read and study and understand all of Srila Prabhupada's books, which takes lifetimes to do that. Why don't we just put our concentration there? And Bhakti Charu Maharaj was very, very enthusiastic and very uh, strong about this point that we should stay chaste to Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada gave, and he also gave classes that explained how Prabhupada gave us everything. All we have to do is learn how to find it in Prabhupada's books and his lectures, his tapes. Baba had five different ways by which he communicated the knowledge. His books, his lectures, his, uh, his room conversations with devotees, his morning walks, his uh, letters to devotees. Um, what else? There's one more. Um, so Prabhupada used different, different mediums to communicate the knowledge that he wanted to communicate. And, you know, I know the devotees who are very senior in Krishna consciousness, what they do is they listen to one of Srila Prabhupada's lectures over and over again, and then they give a class. They take, well, I know one devotee specifically, he told me, but I'm going to give a class that day. I'll choose one of Prabhupada's lectures and I'll listen to it three or four times and that'll prepare me for my class. Not that he listened to it once or twice because each time you listen to it, if you're listening to it, you'll find that you, you attain more and you also retain more. 
So um, we just don't understand the process of bhakti. And therefore we think it's just information we have to gather from different sources. It's more like going deeper into whatever we have. And there's so much information that is available through Prabhupada that we could never possibly exhaust, even in many, many lifetimes, what Srila Prabhupada has given us. It's not possible. So, so yeah, uh, it, what, what to do, just ignore those books, that's all. Okay. So Maharaj, first thing is the chastity, what you told about. We should remain chest, chest to Sri Prabhupada and his writings. That is why mm -hmm. we should not do that. So um, in, in any way, if there is any kind of discussions about that, as a junior, should we uh, raise such points in the temple or we should just, men I mean, we should tell them and you know, once, and we should not mention it again. Yeah, well, it doesn't, yeah, you can raise it, you can speak that, but you should make sure you speak your, whatever you have to say, you support it with statements by Srila Prabhupada. That way, when you support Prabhupada's, what you're saying with Prabhupada's statements, it has authority. I mean, Prabhupada did say we should we could also read in uh, the books of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He said that, and then he pointed out two specific books that he encouraged the devotees to read. One was Jiva Dharma, which is the science of Bhakti, and the other one is uh, Chaitanya Shikshamrita. He said the devotees should read those two books. Because we don't listen to Prabhupada, we don't know the philosophy. We don't know how Krishna consciousness works. We do. We just Prabhupada to, to most of us is the guy who sits on the Vyasa sun and we walk into the temple. We offer our obeisances, and that's it. <laughs> do we read his books every day? Do we hear his lectures every day? That is Prabhupada consciousness, and that is Krishna consciousness. That's required if you want to understand this process. So yes, you can speak, but make sure you support your words with statements that will give your speech some credibility, some weight. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Um, Maharaj, if, uh, I just wanted to humbly ask, uh, why as a junior or an, at the neophyte level, why one should not approach other books other than uh, Prabhupada? I just mentioned that. I said because if, if, if someone speaks something different and when Prabhupada's speaking, your faith will be destroyed or, or your space will be damaged your faith will be damaged and other acharyas sometimes emphasize other aspects of devotional service you'll see each of the acharyas emphasize a certain aspect of devotional service so some of Prabhupada's god brothers will speak about more about rasika stuff things that are in the higher levels of the mellows of Krishna and Vrindavan. And that'll be most of the topics. <laughs> so everything is there in Prabhupada's books. Why do we have to go somewhere else? <laughs> it's, it's all there. We don't even know Prabhupada's books yet and we're running somewhere else. <laughs> it's like, you don't even know your husband and you're looking towards another guy for advice. You know? A woman is considered chaste if she stays faithful to her husband. Thank you. 
I think it's a chastity of a woman. The chastity of the woman is her prized quality. The one who stays chaste to see the Prophet's <laughs> teachings actually will get the full mercy of the Lord. The other thing is just do it, just just the mind is just restless, so it goes this way and that way. It's due to a restless mind. That's it. Everything is there in Prabhupada's books. Just in the books alone, to speak about his letters, his conversations, his morning walks. I mean, there's thousands of, I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of lectures. Of Prabhupada. In fact, the archives haven't even, haven't even put all of the Prabhupada's lectures in print yet, in, in recording yet. They're still doing it. Okay. Even what Prabhupada has given us is not all, all of it's not even available yet. They're still working on it. It's amazing what Prabhupada did. Name a subject, he talked about it. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj. I think so. We do have the enough uh, enough material. Uh, so maybe if we exhaust that in this life, then we can think we, we are not going to exhaust that. Not possible to exhaust it. Not possible. Thank you. Thank you. Unless, unless you live for thousands of years, you might do it. Other than that. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, Shidevi Mataji, you can go ahead. Um, you're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Satya Bhama. Please accept my humble obeisance, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your divine lotus feet. These 26, these qualities of the Vaishnav that we are encouraged to, to try to cultivate seem like, you know, quite uh, very, very challenging because um, how does one go about this? You know, we are trying to engage in the process of devotional service and there's so much to do, you know, practically speaking, it's like 24 hours are not enough. And uh, we are somehow trying, you know, to do so many different things. So, what what is the rec what would you recommend? Like, what is the like first? Let's is there some recommendation? You must get these first five, and then the next five like that. Is a stepwise way to focus on you know a certain layer, and then go to the next level, the next level like that? Because how does it one acquire? all these 26 qualities this is all done simultaneously these are done simultaneously not well i'm gonna focus on one then i'll focus on the other no throughout your interaction in devotional service you practice these qualities that's all situations appear where you will should adopt one of will cultivate this particular quality in this particular situation the day is variegated where different aspects of these qualities will manifest themselves and then at that time you practice them you put you putting you've been put in a position so you have to be tolerant. You've been put in a position, so you have to practice humility. You've been put into position, and you need to practice kindness. You've been put into position, you have to uh, keep your, you know, you have to, um, you know, uh, be respectful. So these things come up in the course of your interaction throughout the day. Okay. 
excuse me. Yeah, so it's not that you line them up one after another. <laughs> it's like, but some of them will develop later on, for instance, po for instance, poetic. Poetic comes at a certain stage of your spiritual development. One will develop this tendency towards being poetic, both in speech and also in writing too. That comes at a certain stage of your development. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. So, it's, uh, it's challenging to see. Such a bummer. Such a bummer. You pay attention. You're not paying attention. Can't you see her? Her communication is completely off. It's your job to correct these things. <laughs> yeah, I could try. Uh, sorry, <laughs> in between she was breaking, but I thought it might she might come back. So that's why I did not interrupt her. Mataji, okay, do you want to? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, but uh, can everyone else hear Mataji? Better now. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. No, it's breaking now, your Mataji. Now it's and your guidance. <laughs> okay. I think we're done. So let's go. Thank let's you. Go. Thanks, Mataji. Yes, Sudha Mataji, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice class on these qualities of a pure devotee. So, Guru, my question is like, uh, how can we develop this quality like equal to all? Uh, it's very tough because I, I personally feel it's very tough for me. Uh, definitely, I'm a very neophyte level, but uh, could you please just um, um, guide on this? Uh, how can we develop uh, that attitude? Like, you know, sometimes we try to tolerate, definitely, but, uh, you know, everyone is like in a different modes. Um, so could you please a little bit um, enlighten on this? Good much. Thank you. Equal to all means learning how to deal with every, each and every person in a devotional, in the Krishna conscious way. That's equal to all. It doesn't mean that, um, well, you don't, you show favor to some people and you don't show favor to others. Just like Krishna, one of the qualities of Krishna is samoham sarabhuteshu namedvesu sthinapriya. Krishna says, I'm equal to all. I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. But then people say, well, Krishna is partial. He's not equal. And what Krishna explains, yayatam mam prapadyante tam sataiva bhajami aham. Mama vartmanu vartante manusha parta sarvashaha. As you approach me, I reciprocate accordingly. So according to the situation, you are the well-wisher of everybody in each and every situation, but how you deal with the situation may be different from person to person, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. okay. Krishna, when he was at Hastinapur, he had the service of welcoming all the guests that were coming for the Rajasuya sacrifice. Maharaj Yudhisthira. And uh, he welcomed people according to their relationship with him. So there were eight different ways in which Krishna reciprocated with eight different types of people. That's equal to all. And so that's an etiquette. That's, that's, that's a behavioral etiquette. 
You treat your children one way, you treat your husband in another way, you treat your parents in another way. That's equal to all. Okay. Yeah, Kardi Kuranj. Thank you. So it's basically understanding others and dealing with them in a Krishna conscious way. Yeah, yeah. And also understanding your relationship with others. What is that relationship? <laughs> Okay, Gurush, thank you so much because I was thinking equal to all means like no matter like how they are, we have to treat them like uh, nicely. So, yeah, but it got a little bit of understanding. Krishna kills the demons, but that's, that's his mercy upon the demons. We avoid the demons, that's our mercy upon the mm -hmm. demons. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, really so much. It really got good understanding. So Guru Maharaj, I have one more question. If it's okay, can I ask? Uh, yes. Um, this is regarding Guru Maharaj, like uh, criticizing and uh, blaspheming and uh, also offending. So I'm just trying to understand, like, could you please a little bit explain, like, you know, uh, does all these terms mean same or like, uh, Criticizing, no. assuming, and offending. No. Mm. Criticizing means something is wrong and you're finding fault with it. Mm. Blasphemy means uh, you have many good qualities, but I look for some something that I don't like about you or some, some quality, and I make that your character description. That's blasphemy. You have many good qualities, but I look for something that I'm looking in your character, looking for some fault, and I make that your know, character description, and then I broadcast that towards other. This person is like this. That's blasphemy. Blasphemy is very, very offensive. Criticizing means just to uh, take issue with some with some particular person or subject. And what's the other one? What's the third one you mentioned? Offending. Uh, offending. Offending is <clears throat> comes in the category of you know blasphemy or unnecessarily criticizing. Unnecessary. It comes it come, can come by envious of another person who offend a person because you're envious of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, very much. <laughs> So, good much like criticizing, uh, you said like you're finding faults with someone. Offending is like you're like something like you're looking for some bad quality in a person and you're trying that's to. Bla that's blasphemy. Okay. Offending is like mostly like you're envious of someone, right? Offending is the, is the general stage, which includes many other characteristics. Mm -hmm. You can offend in so many different ways. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. so we have to avoid three things when you are dealing with devotees, right, Guru Maharaj? Mm -hmm. So we have to avoid these things when we are dealing with the devotees. We should not criticize or like offend or last love. What right? do you think? What do you think? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> yes, yes. So no, my question is like uh, criticizing sometimes like, you know, mm, uh, we might uh, like probably like, you know, when we encounter like who's not like like-minded so some things we may not like it and we try to share with the friend is that also like uh, offending or criticizing can be okay so we should... okay. the thing is always be in a mood of service to the other devotees then you won't you won't bother to worry about criticizing or finding fault if you're in a mood of service how to serve the devotee. Okay, Keep that okay. quality in mind. It's very important to understand this. That mm -hmm. In interaction with devotees, it's always in the mood of service. The guru sometimes has to correct and chastise his disciple, but it's done in the mood of service. The parent has to sometimes punish and correct his, their children done in the mood of service. Mm -hmm. 
But when you do that to outsiders, people who don't have a relationship, it falls into a different category because that's not your relationship with that person. Okay, right. So the mode should always, uh, how to serve, then these things will go away automatically. Right. Yes, yes Guru Yeah. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Yeah. And even if there is some problem, you don't even notice it because it's not important. Mm. Focus on the essence. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Raj, before I take your question, I'm going to take a two-minute break. Not even two, maybe 30 seconds. I'll be back. I got to do a little medicine vrata here for a minute. <laughs> Okay, Raj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, mm -hmm. Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got this um, the waterfalls coming out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> Maharaj, there are a couple of times today that you mentioned that we are very fortunate that we have such a vast ocean of Srila Prabhupada resources, being like his uh, morning classes, his lectures, his books, his letters. We have video, we have audio, we have reading material. And then we have his devotees that give us even more like biographies, Srila Prabhupada memories. The ocean is just so vast. And it's very easy to get lost in that and think, so I wonder if you have any recommendations on, oh, this is nice, this is nice, this is nice. These are a few things that to go for, because otherwise I just get lost in it all. My recommendations will be only my own personal preferences, which doesn't mean it's just an absolute principle. Uh, every day, Without fail, I listen to Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam lectures. Bhagavatam. Uh, and then I just finished the first canto, second canto, and I'm listening to his third canto lectures. And I'll go on to the fifth canto, sixth canto, and seventh canto. Then maybe I'll go on to his morning walks after that. Um, then I read the Bhagavatam also every day, along with the lectures. Um, then you have, one thing I also like to read accounts about Prabhupada's life written by his, uh, his disciples. These really bring out a lot of the amazing and most uh, extraordinary activities that Prabhupada did when he was here and how he related to his devotees. These are my preferences. I don't read the letters. Letters are somewhat personal and sometimes because they specifically deal with a person, a particular person's situation. I mean, they cannot be used in a general sense. Room conversations are also interesting because they, Prabhupada likes getting into dialogues with his devotees and they broach a particular subject and then they, they take that subject and they, you can just turn it. So whatever subject you want to hear about, you can find it in Prabhupada's either conversations or his morning walk conversations, which are also conversations. Uh, anything you want to know, just you'll find a particular discussion on that topic by by Shiva Prabhupada.
So you choose. <laughs> Thank you, Maj. It's in one giant sweet ball, whatever side you bite it on, tastes the same <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Thanks, Raj Prabhu. Uh, any other questions, devotees? Okay. Maybe we can. Okay. So maybe we can um, end here. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm supposed to go to a program tomorrow. And if I do go, um, I won't be able to do the class. Uh, but as it seems now, because of my particular health condition, I might wind up canceling the program. And if I do, I'll be here for the class. <laughs> so, uh, um, so stand by and whoever's hosting, Tomorrow's should be ready to fill in if there's the need to. That's fine, Guru Maharaj. I will inform Brinda Mataji. Thank you. Thanks for letting us know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll end the call now. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna.